Wow, look, a topic I haven't talked about before. Tree ring dating. Yay! And what better video to respond to than Eric Hovind? He made a video trying to explain why tree ring dating doesn't disprove the biblical account of creation. Apologia actually already made a video on this, so feel free to check out his video before or after this one. Now a small announcement. My brother made me a new outro. Yay! I know, I know, my previous outro was fire, but I'm sure you'll like this new one too. Not like you guys stay until the end of the video anyway. <clears throat> yeah, so be sure to watch or skip to the end if you want to see it. Alright, let's begin. I've heard people say that tree ring dating would disprove the Bible. I want to know, is that true? Well, that depends. If you take the Bible in a literal sense and believe that a great flood happened 4400 years ago that killed off every single living organism on Earth except for what was on Noah's boat, then yes, tree ring dating would disprove that. But of course, not everyone is a creationist like you, Eric. For Christians who take the Bible metaphorically, it doesn't disprove the Bible at all. So let's have a brief overview here. There are quite a few very old trees that are still alive today that are older than 4400 years old. The old Tojiko, located in Sweden, is about 9500 years old. The Methuselah, located in California, is almost 5,000 years old, and these are just two examples. Of course, tree ring dating isn't always used independently. It is often combined with carbon dating for dating and calibration purposes. Okay, that music is pretty catchy. Damn, he doesn't put a link to it in the description. <sighs> the science of dating trees is known as dendrochronology, where they can actually drill a core sample into the tree, extract it, and count the tree rings to find out how old the tree is. Yes, dendrochronology. It's a whole field of science. Sure, you may look at it and think it's just counting tree rings, but it's not all they do. Dendrochronologists do a lot of analyses on tree rings, which help them determine the changes of climates in the past, events in history, and even the dates of wooden structures and buildings that have historical significance. It's a whole field of science. Counting rings and dating a tree is just a small part of what dendrochronologists do. But it's not an exact science. Uh, what? So you disagree with one part of the science that they do and immediately discredit all of dendrochronology. Wonderful. What a time to be alive! Trees have been known to grow two or three rings in one year simply because of the climate changes that have taken place. And you think scientists haven't considered that, why? And it's a known fact that climate can change the rate of tree ring growth. Wouldn't you think that scientists who studied this and are the ones who told you that ring tree growth could differ would have considered it when making their age calculations? Dendrochronology isn't a joke. They have to take many factors into consideration, including climate. Reading the rings on a tree is complex. It requires skill and experience. I am not a dendrochronologist myself, so I can't imagine how difficult it is, but I do know it isn't something anyone could just do. So so let's address the multiple ring issue now. But before we get to that, I bet you are all hungry to learn about the exact mechanisms of tree ring growth. Come on, don't be shy. I know you're curious. Trees have two types of growth. The primary growth involves it getting longer at the tips of branches and roots and is responsible for the heights of trees. The other is secondary growth, which makes the tree wider and thicker. That's the growth we are looking at today. The part of the tree responsible for secondary growth is called the cambium. We're going to look at the vascular cambium, which exists for most trees that we are used to. This part of the plant produces the xylem cells on the inside which are responsible for transporting water up from the roots, and phloem, which transports sap around the plant. In the trunk of trees, the vascular cambium can form new cells of xylem and phloem, forming secondary vascular tissues. This pushes the primary xylem inwards and the primary phloem outwards, which ultimately creates a new ring. The biggest question now is, when does the secondary growth occur? What conditions give trees the order to produce more secondary xylem and phloem? <laughs> I bet you're all dying to know, but I'm gonna troll you guys and not tell you! <laughs> Now you'll have to subscribe and turn on that notification bell in order to be notified when I actually reveal the answer. <laughs> I'm such a genius! These trees aren't the oldest. That privilege goes to the bristlecone pine trees in the White Mountains, about 100 miles from this location. Core samples from the oldest bristlecone pine discovered show that it had 5,062 growth rings. Eric, 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 Eric. The table you showed there says age. The age is 5,062 years, not the number of rings, age. Which means, you guessed it, scientists have already done the proper math, the normalization, and considered climate variations, and calculated it to be 5,062 years old. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's 5,062 years old. Growth rings are determined by climate. A dry climate will give it a growth ring. Wet climate will give it another growth ring. Cold can give it a small growth ring. 
Alright, I guess I'll talk about climate and growth rings now. Every species of trees is different, but in general, one ring is formed per year, and that is the standard especially for trees that live in places where seasons are present. During good conditions, aka spring and possibly winter, growth is enhanced. Cells divide and a ring is formed. Meanwhile, when it gets cold, during the times of fall and winter, growth is inhibited. It is this switching between growing and not growing that causes rings to be visible in a tree. So a good rule of thumb is that there is one ring per year. Of course, that does mean there are exceptions. Places that rapidly change from good conditions to bad ones could give trees more than one ring per year. However, these rings do look different than annual rings, and are usually cross-checked with other trees as well. In fact, it's not difficult to tell what the age of a tree is. Usually tree rings are used to determine how the climate was during that time. For example, if conditions were good, the tree will give a thick growth ring, while poor conditions lead to thin ones, and that makes sense. If resources are scarce, cell division is slowed down, so there is less production of xylem and phloem. Of course, it's more than just the general categories of good or bad climates, but I won't go over them today. The point is there isn't a dispute on how old trees are. Dendrochronologists are experts at this field. They can tell the difference between annual growth rings and duplicate rings that are formed due to varying conditions. When they examine these and find out that there are 5,062 growth rings, this is great evidence that fits what the Bible actually tells us. Is that so, Eric? Is that truly so? Is this really, quote, great evidence that fits with the Bible? Let's be honest here. Even if what you said about tree rings is true, which it's not, that wouldn't be evidence for the Bible or the events in the Bible. At most, it would just not contradict it. Ah, silly, silly, silly. The Bible says the flood destroyed the world 4,400 years ago. So the oldest tree we should find should be less than 4,400 years old. And when accounting for multiple growth rings per year, we can easily see the bristlecone pine fits the description given to us in the Bible. The oldest tree should be about 4,400 years old. And that's what we see. See, now here's the thing. Let's keep working off the assumption that what Eric said is true. Let's say that when scientists mean age, they actually mean the number of tree rings, for whatever reason. Even given that, how would you know that the tree would date to under 4,400 years old? Eric, have you done the math and the observations yourself? Have you personally looked at the rings? Don't you acknowledge that maybe it could date to, I don't know, 4,800 years old or something? You're so quick to jump from 5,000 to 4,400 simply from the concept that more than one ring could form per year, without giving an explanation at all on how you eliminate 600 years off a tree. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you learned something new about tree rings. Sorry that this video was shorter than usual. I'd like to verbally thank Garrett Renault and Aided Furball for being $20 patrons. You and other patrons make my channel possible, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you.